Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. I hope you're doing well. Today, we're talking about a very special man on the internet, quite possibly the biggest living piece of trash in the world of rock music right now. Uh, that's Mr. Ronald Radke. This man just said that I uh, sexually assumed someone pretty much. He's implying that I did it. Radke's lawyer says his client repeatedly asked Fantano to take the video down, but after refusing to do so, they feel they have no other choice but to file the suit. You know what? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There. Now at least it makes sense why it smells like dookie in here. <laughs> What's up, boys? Welcome back to the Tom Dark channel. I'm your host, Tom Dark. Got a new camera today, but uh, that's not really important. What is important is that today we're going to be taking a look at a new lawsuit filed against the internet's busiest music nerd, Anthony Fantano. <laughs> A guy who seems to have a habit of making famous music artists really, really mad. Fantano made this troll video where he claimed that Drake slid into his messages to send him a vegan cookie recipe with what is clearly a doctored screenshot. But as it turns out, Drake did actually message him saying, your existence is a light one and the one is because you're alive and because you somehow married a black girl. I'm feeling a light to decent one on your existence. And the reason we know this is because Drake saw the video and decided to post these messages himself, which obviously led a lot of people to say, why the hell is the biggest rapper in the world messaging some YouTube music critic to like roast him in a very <laughs> bad way. May I add, like is Drake really that insecure that Fantano gave him a negative review on some album he made? The answer is probably yes. But if anything, what this does show is that Fantano is someone that musicians do take note of. He is by default the most popular music critic on YouTube, if not in the entire world, at least as far as like online personalities go. And another guy that Anthony has really ripped on over the past while, seemingly way more than Drake even, is Ronnie Radke, the lead singer of Falling in Reverse. Now, Ronnie is a guy with a whole history of controversies that I've covered before in a video on the Turkey Tom channel. He was originally in a popular scene or emo band called Escape the Fate. And while in that band, he got himself into a brawl in the middle of the desert that resulted in one person dying and Ronnie getting probation, which he then violated and as a result, it got him arrested again. Ronnie pled guilty to battery and was sentenced to two and a half years in prison. Now keep in mind, Ronnie didn't kill anyone here. He wasn't, you know, the, the super violent party here that resulted in someone dying. He was just present for it. And the reason why he went to jail for two and a half years was because he violated his probation. But once he was out of prison, he formed a new band called Falling in Reverse, a band that would be very successful, but he as a person would still be mired in controversy past that point. In 2012, Ronnie got arrested for not showing up to court hearings regarding his ex-girlfriend who had alleged domestic abuse. Sally Watts claimed that Radke pulled her hair, shoved her face in the ground, gave her a black eye, and she even posted a photo online as evidence of it happening. He was released on bail for 30 grand and eventually pled no contest to a lesser charge of disturbing the peace. So it appears that the domestic violence stuff didn't really go through. He wasn't convicted of that. So it's important to note here that Ronnie didn't plead guilty to anything relating to physically harming Sally, being indicative that there probably wasn't enough evidence to convict him. That same year, we also get the mic stand incident where at one of his shows, he threw some mic stands into the crowd with one girl getting hit in the head. He was charged with simple assault for that, but he's since talked about the remorse he feels, and he's also claimed that he and the girl are on good terms and that she received a massive settlement from this happening. I threw some mic stands into the crowd. Okay, I injured somebody. Stupid, right? Yeah, she got a cut. She got some stitches. She's not mad. She got $800,000 for it. She's she's not mad, guys. You You guys are mad. And she's not. You're stupid. You guys are fucking stupid. Now in 2015, he was accused of SA by a woman named Casey Boswell. And while it initially had a lot of people up in arms, details around the case revealed that there was really nothing for the supposed victim to stand on. She claimed that it happened on a tour bus, but that entire tour bus was then swabbed by the police and there was no evidence of the allegations. And ultimately he was never arrested by the police. Now at the time of this accusation, Ronnie's legal team compiled several defamatory statements by Casey and some of her friends online. She claimed that Ronnie was arrested, that he had to post bail, that there was a kit with the evidence and that there were witnesses to her side of events, none of which appear to be true at all. So Ronnie ended up suing her for defamation, seeking $15 million. Although as far as I've been able to find, there's only evidence of him getting six grand as a result of winning the lawsuit. But some people still think he got a bit more, which maybe did happen as he claimed on a TikTok that he got a lot more money than was documented. Of course you get it wrong. You left this part out. 
the part where I sued them for millions of dollars and won. And since you didn't put allegedly after everything you said, I could also sue you for millions of dollars and win. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up all of this is just to say there are a few things that Ronnie's done that definitely happened, like with the mic stand or that incident in the desert, but there's also a lot of misconceptions around these events. For example, people think that Ronnie killed someone in the desert and that he is a murderer, but that didn't happen. To this day, some people still believe that he assaulted Casey Boswell, but if you want to talk about evidence, it just doesn't seem to exist, and he ended up winning a defamation case against her, so I think we can probably say definitively that he's uh, innocent in that case. I mean, you know, we gotta we gotta go with the innocent until proven guilty presumption here, right? As for his ex-girlfriend, Sally Watts, and her claims, you can choose to believe her if you want. I think the black eye picture is definitely disturbing, but as far as legal punishment, he wasn't convicted of doing anything, so really, what is there to say here? Maybe there's more evidence as to her claims that I haven't seen, but no one else has managed to compile it thus far. I haven't found it anywhere I've looked online, so as a result, you know, you gotta assume innocent until proven guilty in that case, I think. And as a result of a lot of misconceptions against Ronnie, he has a bit of a big chip on his shoulder, okay? perhaps the biggest chip in the world of rock and roll, and he's been on a bit of a, uh, he's been on a bit of a tear lately with his songs. Lately, instead of sounding like a rock artist, a lot of his tracks are sounding more like Tom McDonald. He's rapping about cancel culture a lot uh, in, <laughs> in a few songs. One of them, and I got a disclaim here, you know, I do like some of his music, especially the older stuff. I even don't mind some of the, some of the later rock stuff he's done, like, uh, you know, the song, uh, <laughs> the song Zombified. The lyrics are corny as hell, like, in, <laughs> in the song, there's this part when he's like they're canceling canceling you and that is like um crazy that is crazy <laughs> that's not good but i mean the song itself is catchy but more recently he put out this song that was like uh more of a tom mcdonald rap song as i as i said earlier he's he's going down that kind of route and in the music video for it he is like jesus in the video <laughs> he's like on a cross it's a little crazy but ronnie is a contentious person for obvious reasons uh he feels wronged by certain people who have spread misconceptions about him and i think that's also fair and he's got a really diehard fan base for his music, despite the fact that, you know, in some aspects, he is a cringy person. Some of the things he's done are really bad. And there's also all these other claims that are not true at all. So it's just like the perfect storm of like bullshit, real shit, Ronnie being him. And on top of that, unfortunately, he's somewhat unable to handle people criticizing him. Y'all remember Brad Taste? Okay, you remember this guy? Uh, he's he's a whole can of worms in and of itself that, I, that I've covered recently, but for the purposes of today, we're just gonna call him a music reviewer. He sits on stream, he listens to an album in full while pausing to give his commentary and thoughts. He like listens to it, he's like, oh, this is fire. Oh, this is not fire. You know, he, he does that. And then he puts a more cut up version of it on YouTube to avoid copyright claims because music stuff on YouTube covering it is really difficult to not get claimed by some label and the label is obviously hard to fight they're not quick usually to retract strikes even if you use like one second of their music they're really annoying so brad cuts it up and puts it on youtube so he can like make money off of his work but one day brad took notice of ronnie radke and decided to mock him for his music just calling him a terrible cringe lord basically in a review of some of his stuff well on august 16th 2023 uh hello that's my birthday brad posted to his channel claiming that ronnie had abused the copyright system to take down his videos that were critical of his music. Uh, just when you thought that Ronnie Radke couldn't be any worse of a human being, he's taken liberty and uh, and he's removed it from, from the internet. Now, of course, I still have it. I still have the folders and I could easily just edit it and, you know, avoid all the copyright claims, which I might do. I might do. But I think it's more important to highlight uh, that he did this, that he, he went through with this. And this then started a huge flame war over on Twitter, wherein Brad would call Ronnie a terrible person, and the rest of the world would also chime in. Uh, and one of the people who chimed in was the most popular music channel on YouTube. Starting beef with even me on Twitter at one point, and now most recently with Brad Taste and Music, uh, hitting him up in DMs to relish in the fact that I, I guess uh, Ronnie had some of Brad's videos taken down, which man, he's really loving. He's really loving that. So sad, so fragile, so sensitive. Now, at the time this went down, I actually made a video on this channel where I talked about all of this and said I didn't like that Ronnie was engaging in this behavior. Whether he personally filed this copyright claim or not, you know, I think to celebrate the censorship of criticism under the guise of like protecting intellectual property when Brad didn't really violate his stuff is really dumb in my opinion and at the time ronnie actually messaged me about this on instagram um <laughs> which is funny like why why is ronnie radke messaging me 
me. I do not know. I'm a YouTuber. He is a famous rock artist. There's no reason to do that. But um, he messaged me basically and was like, look, Tom, I haven't seen your video. But he said that if what I was saying in the video was that he had taken down Brad's video actively, then I needed to correct the record because in his words, he was only cheering on what the label had done. He himself did not actually get the video taken down and like file the strike, uh, which, you know, I guess he's right there ultimately. And that is what I said in my video. I said, you know what? We don't know if Ronnie personally filed the strike. All we know is that he celebrated it. And that does seem to be the case, but I, I don't really care about that delineation personally. Like I still think that Ronnie showed himself to be unable to handle criticism there, but that's really all I said in that video. I was pretty, you know, tame, pretty middle of the road as I always am. As you guys all know, I'm a, a massive fence sitter. So um, yeah, I wasn't too harsh on Ronnie for that. Despite him cheering on what I saw as the censorship of a relatively harmless music review channel. But when Fantano talked about this, he said a lot more than I did. Whether he's using his Twitter page to harass and shut down people trying to talk about their uh, experiences uh, having been sexually assaulted. And he doesn't do the same thing that maybe some other artists do uh, uh, when they're hit with similar allegations. They might make a statement. They might apologize. They might disappear into the shadows, never to be heard from again because they're cowardly pieces of shit. But no, not Ronald. Ronald doubles down and sues. On top of this, he's had domestic violence charges too against him, which were ultimately dismissed true. But the fact that all of this uh, behavior is piling up here is quite sussy wussy which is a legal term. I think from this clip alone, we can see that Anthony didn't do a great job of going through these allegations. He just kind of fires them off all point blank with no real elaboration or further commentary or further information about it. I think he could have done a much better job here going through all of it more carefully. If, if you know, if you want to get into allegations like that, I think you got to do a little more. I mean, you can obviously mention allegations and the existence of them offhandedly if you want, but if you're going to take a stance of seemingly believing the victim and then just saying like, well, he's sued the accuser without really getting into how he won that case and she lost a defamation suit like it was determined in a court of law that she defamed him i mean it's it's kind of hard to justify dealing with allegations like that right like anthony did not do a good job at all i don't like ronnie radke that much you know i think he is an insecure person in a lot of cases it seems that way to me he seems to be like reading every single thing anyone says about him and he takes a lot of offense to it like when he cheered on brad being striked for just reviewing his music and i would call what brad did ultimately like fair use of the content for the purpose of criticism you know, Ronnie sucks in that case. But when you get into the legal stuff and the more specific allegations about certain people, you you really have to be careful with that kind of thing. And Anthony Fantano did not do that. There's another weird instance in that clip when Fantano says the word uh, sexual assault at this point in time in the video. Whether he's using his Twitter page to harass and shut down people trying to talk about their uh, experiences uh, having been sexually assaulted. But if you even look at the screenshots that are there on screen, the accuser he's talking about doesn't even use the word sexual assault assault. This is a different allegation than the false allegation that Casey Boswell made. And I looked into this stuff during my prior video, so I can kind of get into it here. Basically, Ronnie was somewhat informally accused of a uh, simple assault on Twitter, not, you know, not sexual assault, just assault, like, bow, 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 I'm Jake Paul. He was accused of that on Twitter, essentially with no evidence to corroborate it, which prompted him to respond by calling the accuser um, massive. <laughs> he called her massive, as in big boned. And he also told her that he will take every last dollar from her for defaming him. Uh, hello, base department. This girl claimed that he choked her eight years prior to the allegation at an event, and this obviously sparked a lot of discussion among fans and detractors, and one of the people who weighed in here was Andy Sizek. Sizek? He's got one of those, uh, Russian names. <laughs> Imagine being Slavic. He's like a YouTube music guy. He's the singer of, uh, the band Monuments and another band called, uh, M Makari, Makari, Makari. Makari, or I hardly know her. And uh, Andy at the time tagged Ronnie in this accusation, hoping that he would address whatever happened here. And Ronnie in return would basically tell him to not get involved in something he can't get out of. He's like, hey. I'm Heisenberg. I am the danger. <laughs> Andy was pretty shocked at that response, uh, and he he ended up responding, and he basically was like, look, I'm just trying to make the scene a more inclusive space for everyone, okay? I'm trying to get to the bottom of this, and I think it's important to respond. You know, there's this quote from him on Twitter where he says, I'm not interested in starting a war. However, this is a very serious accusation and goes well beyond just acting like an asshole. Those of us in the music world have a responsibility to hold others accountable if their behavior is dangerous. Andy went on to express his disdain at many of his heroes and 
and uh, Warped Tour icons supposedly ending up being sexual predators. And if you guys have listened to like Warped Tour music like uh, Pierce the Veil or A Day to Remember, you guys know there's like some allegations against certain members of those bands. Like the drummer from Pierce the Veil was accused by a girl who said when she was like, I want to say 15 or 16, that uh, essentially something bad had happened to her by that guy. And that guy ended up being removed from the band. And uh, a similar thing happened to one of the guys in A Day to Remember, which is my personal favorite band. Uh, the, the bassist was accused of something bad and it resulted in him leaving the band uh, ultimately. So, you know, I can understand to an extent Andy's um, sort of upsetted, upsetness, his, his anger, his rage at seeing that some of these people, you know, may have not been the greatest guys in the world. But after that, he would make a big, big mistake because he would call Ronnie the Bill Cosby of alt music, which is... <laughs> kind of a, you know, if you know <laughs> what Bill Cosby apparently did, like, doy, not the smartest comparison. And his evidence for this comparison was basically like the amount of accusations levied at Radke rather than their validity. And he really didn't uh, delve into what was true and what was not, which is kind of a similar thing to what Fantano did. Ronnie ended up posting a very scathing response on TikTok where he said that Andy was just some guy he'd never heard of talking shit to gain some buzz off of his name. And Ronnie would ultimately end this whole beef with a tweet saying, Guys in a band I never heard of talking shit. Dudes in bands I grew up listening to fully support me. Cope. Cope. You're coping. Ronnie's accusing you of coping and you're coping and seething. He would later add, I'm going to start doing what Andy Sizek does and blame it on autism every time I say something crazy. Damn, Andy's just like Brad Taste for real, for real. I did it because I was disabled. Now, all of the tweets around this, aside from that last one, have been deleted as far as I can tell. So ultimately, the Twitter beef was kind of settled. But despite that, Fantana would include some stuff from Andy Sizek in his his video and not really critically uh, go into it or interpret it in any way. Now, in that video, as far as I can tell, Fantano does differentiate that the Casey Boswell allegation is different from this Australian woman who accused Ronnie of uh, assault, like physical assault, but he does mislabel the allegation of assault as sexual assault when really that's not even what the accusation was. So overall, you can tell from this video, his coverage was very, very sloppy. But the question we, you and I, are asking today is did Anthony Fantano commit defamation? Did he defame? Ronnie Radke, legally speaking, because Ronnie himself has recently filed a defamation lawsuit against the internet's busiest music nerd. This man just said that I uh, sexually assert someone pretty much. He's implying that I did it. He's implying I did it because he's saying that I doubled down on literally getting accused of something that never happened. It does seem to me personally like Fantano did um, imply in his video that Ronnie was guilty of these allegations. I don't think you can deny that from watching his video. I mean, just from that one clip where Fantano says that Ronnie bullies people who speak out about their experiences being sexually assaulted by him. I mean, he's basically implying there that it definitely happened, right? That's what he's saying. And then you've also got that other clip where he says that Ronnie's response is to sue the victims in question of these scenarios without going on to explain that ultimately Ronnie won that lawsuit and that person was determined in court to have defamed him. I mean, you know, it's it's really just some very sloppy, slobbery coverage of a complicated situation that I don't think he did a very good job of going over. He could have done way better justice to the story than just rapid firing a bunch of shit and seemingly not really looking into it at all. Fantano himself directly accuses plaintiff of using his Twitter page to harass and shut down people trying to talk about their experiences having been sexually assaulted by Radke, adding, as he speaks these words into the camera, Fantano simultaneously displayed on the screen entirely falsified accusations about Mr. Radke made last year by an Australian woman named Bree Jamieson. The woman accused Radke of throwing her against a van and choking her. The suit adds, contrary to Fantano's mischaracterization, Miss Jamieson did not actually claim to have been sexually assaulted by Radke. She falsely charged that he physically assaulted her, which he categorically did not do. It says there were several other passengers in the van she drove for the 2015 tour, and no one observed anything that she contended occurred. Continuing, Ms. Jamieson voluntarily deleted the above reference tweet, as well as others about Radke. Speaking through legal counsel, Ms. Jamieson indicated that she does not currently intend to make any further public comments about Radke. 
Now, the problem Fantano seems to have gotten himself into here is that he, like I said, rapid-fired off information about a ton of accusations made towards Ronnie without any real desire to delve deeper into what was said, who was right versus who was wrong, and if there was any merit to these allegations in the first place. I mean, he did that with two specific ones that we saw, and he didn't really manage to, you know, determine what the truth was of those. He did very shitty reporting. He implied that many of the accusations were true as well, despite the fact that in the case with the Australian woman who claimed physical assault happened, there was no proof of it. She she ended up shutting her mouth about it once lawyers got involved. And Ronnie also, like I said, won a defamation suit against the other accuser, which is definitely something that Ronald's lawyers intend to really hone in on. The suit continues. Immediately following his republication of Miss Jamieson's libel in the video, Fantano then displays on screen false and defamatory quotes by a woman named Caitlin Casey Boswell, as well as Levi Rounds. Along with the headline from a June 10th, 2015 article, on the Metal Sucks website. Above the three images, Fantano writes, these are separate allegations. They were not. The attorney notes, the police did not arrest Radke. The prosecutor did not charge Radke. Radke was not required to post bail. No restrictions were placed on Radke's movements. Radke later sued the accuser, with the judge entering a judgment in Radke's favor in July of 2016. But the suit contends that Fantano made no mention of the fact that Radke was vindicated in a courtroom. The suit alleges that Fantano acted with malice and knew at the time he made the defamatory statements that they were false, or acted with reckless disregard for the truth or falsity of his statements. So I'm not a lawyer, but in my opinion, I don't think Fantano necessarily acted with like direct malice here. But as for reckless disregard for the truth, my impression from the video itself is that Fantano didn't really care about the details of these accusations. He just saw that Ronnie had done something shitty to Brad by cheering on the copyright, you know, strikes. And as a result, he felt it was more than justified to make a video calling him a bad person. And that alone, that, that part alone, as far as calling out Ronnie for what he did cheer on for Brad, I agree with that. But what I don't agree with is firing off information about all these accusations without really clarifying it, without delving into any of it, and without really trying to pick it apart and do, you know, good reporting. You know, when you're a public figure on YouTube, realistically, you have a responsibility to try to get to the bottom of things and to, you know, if you don't want to do that, just shut the fuck up about it, and Fantano didn't do that. So in my opinion, whether or not Anthony loses in court, I still think he made a really shitty video that definitely spread some false information at the very least, and I think he should change how he covers things in the future because this will, you know, get him into more trouble legally, probably. Uh, it will also, I mean, spread misinformation, which, hot take, that's a bad thing to do. But the real question here is going to be, what are the lawyers going to decide? What should happen? As an article by Stereo Gum points out, recently music artists have really been cracking down on YouTubers, like in 2022 when Cardi B won a massive lawsuit against a music channel, in which case she won $4 million. It was never in my favor. I mean, that, that was an international superstar coming after a blogger with 200,000 followers, okay? She had millions flagging videos, taking down Instagrams, you know, this is my fourth Instagram right now. Um, I mean, it, but for me, I was like, I, it could be billions of people. What I feel is what I feel. I've always been that way. Cardi B sued her for what she claimed was a malicious campaign of posts, which claimed that Cardi B had contracted STDs and abused drugs. The trial lasted a total of one week and was an absolute blowout, at which point this YouTuber was found liable on three separate claims of defamation. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so I, I don't know how this case will go with Anthony, but regardless of if he loses or not, he's got to reconsider how he covers this stuff, as I said before. But honestly, I doubt that we'll get a statement from him anytime soon because because this lawsuit is ongoing, and honestly, he doesn't stand to benefit from commenting on it publicly at this point. He could uh, cause himself more problems if he talks about it again. If he goes into these allegations again, he could face some serious repercussions. So I don't think we're going to hear anything about this until either Ronnie drops the lawsuit for whatever reason, or he wins, or he somehow loses, and then we'll, you know, maybe get an update from either side. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the main channel, Turkey Tom, where you can watch the new uh, almost four hour long Daniel Larson video. Highly recommended view viewing for any astute intellectuals like me. You can subscribe to this channel for more videos like this about ongoing uh, internet stuff. You can subscribe to the Tom Dark Live channel for live stream clips where I cover stuff in a more relaxed, chill way. I'm just a chill guy, you know? I'm like, uh... I'm like Curtis Connor. <laughs> I'm like Curtis Connor. I don't, I don't even want to imply that. That's dark. That's dark. That is truly dark. And subscribe to the Tom IRL channel for other stuff. Goodbye. Hey, buddy. Did you hear the news? 
You're getting sued.